of the players are now these days, which is good. So Rihanna and Oni has some stiff competition. And what would you say? You, you've obviously mentioned about um, when you broke onto the professional circuit in '92. Um, you obviously had the players like Alison Fisher and I playing uh, the match playing Stroud. Um, the there are a few lady players that play pool that don't play snooker so much. Um, so I don't see women players play a lot in clubs now, but, but I remember when I was much younger, I'm a snooker uh, then from my memories, certainly. Um, and obviously on the on the men's tour when I turned pro, the lady players were allowed to turn professional, so we had quite a few. I mean, you had Anne-Marie Farron as well, gave us a go for a few years. And um, See uh, headline names in the women's circuit. We, we, we don't have... Uh, any names much bigger than Rianne Evans, obviously 11 times uh, world champion. Um, she has won this event as well four times. She is looking to route that Rianne's uh, taken to get here. Rianne was one of the top two seeds, so she was spared uh, round robin qualifying yesterday. Um, in the last 16, she beat uh, Louise Cothier 3 0. And this morning in the quarter final, she um, first a debut um, in the semi finals of a main event. She has won a host of under 21s titles, including the world under 21s championship. But uh, this is a different different level of um, competition for this afternoon. So it will be championship qualifiers last year and had a very tough match against her, one, I think 10-7 in the end. But the year before, Rianne Evans actually defeated Robin Hull. Yes, I was about or, to say, so you must have frames a, away. Bit of, uh, a bit of nerves, was there, when, when, when you played um... Black and uh, take the match further. And Yeah, I was under a lot of pressure. She's a very, very, very capable player, Rianne Evans, and uh, I certainly knew that when she beat Robin Hull the year before. So you, you can't take, have to play a lady player it's unusual for me and uh, it, in a way it was easy because she's such, she's such a good player you, en you end up being able to focus and concentrate because Parker she doesn't get a good result here we'll learn a lot from playing Rianne Evans certainly I think I think obviously Rianne is, is a, a player that the, the younger players will all, all aspire to that, um, this, this is a big game for Emma as we say it's going to be a, um, it's a difficult task but she's done really well to get to get this far and of course, we saw Rianne. Um, you mentioned Rianne beat Robin Hull in the World Qualifiers. Um, she also uh, gave Kendall. Oh, yeah, that just shows if uh, if anyone watching this match needed to know just how good Rianne Evans is. You know, just mentioning those few matches there just tells you all you need to know, really. Mm. Do you, Do you think Dominic that for um, at the start of the uh, start of the decade? I think it was. I mean, she did struggle to get results, but do you think that's something that? She, uh, a top get better playing against men week in week out or I think it's good for the game to, to have women playing alongside the men as well um, as I say it used to happen in, in my early days as a pro personality if you have the right attitude and think okay I might not win many matches on the tour but I'm going to learn a lot along the way and if you use it you know to that in to that at matches um, and have a different sort of outlook and a, a different way of looking at things um, you know defeats one after the other can be quite dispiriting for you and, and can you can lose a lot of near last year the masters at the southwest academy she made a, a break of 139 um, which was a, a figure that she actually matched in a competition um, in australia a few weeks ago the the australian women's open so there's no question a little bit of a scrappy start here dominic to the the opening frame obviously perhaps there's a there's a few nerves on both both sides yeah and when you begin a match sometimes it just takes a little while to find your focus Rianne did pot a good red into the green pockets earlier on and she's beautiful short, short, short format the opening frame is crucial isn't it it's it's really sort of settles you down would you, would you agree with that yeah it is a bit because if you go one nil down in a best of seven winning that second frame becomes very very important because obviously two nil down theoretically you then got to win four out the next so we'll just uh, talk a little bit about emma like i say this is a, a debut in the semi-finals of one of the the main events on the world uh, women's snooker tour um she come through the the qualifying group yesterday she she qualified i believe top um this afternoon um so she already had a couple of couple of matches today and like i say the she came through a qualifying group yesterday she actually um plays at the the grove snooker center so she's obviously um, accustomed to, to being around obviously sort of top professionals. No, she may have had a game or two with some very good players there. If not, you know, Judd himself, I don't know, but the thing is, I mean, there's so many tournaments on the television these days, you can always learn. I mean, when I, when I um, back in those days, so I wouldn't have learned myself as much um, as I would do now watching um, the game at the highest level, because the standard uh, today the strength and depth of men's snooker anyway is absolutely I, I guess the same case for any sort of youngster coming through playing snooker would would you encourage them to play in absolutely everything they could or, or is it sort of a balance of of practice time you know going to the practice table and, and ironing out problems or going in the if you're if you're young and you're, you're keen definitely playing as many taunts as you can but there might be one or two 
instances where you're struggling, you've lose, lost a few matches, and you might feel there's a couple of elements on your game or your te technique or something, an aspect of your game you're not happy with, you don't really get the chance uh, as often as you'd like to to work on those aspects. So it can be a bit of a... Um, this red goes into the bottom right hand pocket, so this is a, a chance perhaps for Rian to get a hand on the table and uh, perhaps make a few points, but there on the, the top cushion, a few of the reds sort of intermingled with each other. It's worth mentioning actually, this, this table they're playing on is actually one I the cloth's got more friction, it's not so skiddy, they don't skid in off the jaws. So this will be a bit of a test because when the cloth's old it's also not easy to get the spin that you're looking for on the cue ball either, so you have to hit the balls harder, so it just makes a whole... I'm not sure if all of them, we did mention Emma plays at, at Grove, but um, whether or not all of them will have access to a table of these sort of like tournament conditions, so... Um, you know, I guess it could cut either way if you're struggling, if, you, if you're not playing well, I guess it could be, well, it must be sort of lovely, you know, amongst the balls, there's no other sort of feeling like it. So, um, but like we say, Rianne did make a 139 break last year here, so uh, she's, um, but obviously Rianne does have a lot of experience playing on. But as you say, these pockets are pretty alien to, to most of the lady players, I'm sure. Most club pockets would be a lot bigger than this. Um, and although this cloth's been on the table quite a while now and it's getting a bit worn, it's probably better than most club tables you'd see these. Like we say, if you're, um, we'd really appreciate if you could, uh, if, if you enjoy what you're, you're listening to and what you're watching, we'd really appreciate if you could uh, give the stream a share. We also as well on our YouTube channel, so if you want uh, to ask a question about the tour or whilst we've got Dominic here with us, if you if you want to ask Dominic a question as well, we'll, we'll try our best to, to answer it. Um, so yeah, uh, keep the questions coming in. Cue ball within six or seven inches of the bulk cushion. Well, that's an excellent reply as well, I have to say. Got the cue ball in behind the yellow. This could cause problems, especially if I rest on them off the side cushion and the top cushion. But this could go wrong. Too much pace could cause a problem. But I think she's okay. Still has to be a safety shot. to contact the reds there and that cannon on the green almost left Rianne with a free ball. Like I say this is another level, a different level of tournament play that she's reached so whatever the outcome of, of today's match you can be very very happy with a, a performance so far this weekend. The other events we have going on in the in the arena you can go over to mysnookerstats.com um, all this weekend's results are, are stored on there so we uh, Yesterday's round robin action um, seeded through to the last 16, as was our number two seed, uh, Rebecca Kenner, who is playing in the other semi final against, uh, we believe, first time semi finalist Susie Opacic. So, on the uh, one of the other outside tables, as I say, we've also got our under 21s event going on, seniors event, and we also have the Challenge Cup. So, all the latest scores and results are on, on my snooker stats if you want to see how, how the players have been getting on this weekend. Bit of a speculative cross double that for for Ian. Was she a bit frustrated? I think not not getting on red beforehand oh, there, Dominic. Yeah. Blue into this left hand corner pocket, but I think she played it well. But the cloth being a bit old, she didn't quite get the purchase on the cue ball and the pot there from Emma. It does look as if Emma's got a nice sort of sturdy cue action. She does a uh, very sort of stable stance by the look. Her bridge hand to the cue ball about sort of 10, 11 inches. That's very good. A lot of the players on the men's tour over the years have tried to short, um, probably preferred by a lot of the, the male professional players because you just got, by having the cue, the tip of the cue, because if you draw the cue back too far, you'll draw it back off the bridge entirely, but you've got a bit more control of the actual direction of the cue. If you have a, a bridge hand about sort of 15 inches from the cue ball, there's a lot more chance of lateral movement as mm -hmm. you strike the cue ball. Um, but he does have a very economical cue action, should we say, quite a short backswing, but he's got quite a small tip size and a fairly heavy cue, so that really does help with getting the reaction out of the cue ball. When she pinches opening frame, that'll be a real sort of nerve settler for her. And uh, certainly Rianne will not be taking this game lightly. She'll be very well aware of, of Emma and her achievements over over the last 12 months and over the recent years. 
I mean, as a kid, she's a former World and 21s champion as well. She did also win the, the UK and 21s uh, discipline as well. So Emma is no stranger to, to lifting titles on the tour. So Rianne will be very close in, in Belgium a couple of months ago. Um, Rianne won that event. This is the, the fourth event of the World Women's Snooker Tour season. We had the UK Championship a few months ago, which was won by um, a few different players. So, unfortunately, Rianne lost in the semi-finals at Anongi, went on to win it. So, Rianne perhaps is, um, I'm not sure if she's frustrated about uh, how the season's gone so far, but it's a new environment. Do, do you think that's uh, something she might be encouraging her to take up? <laughs> yeah, I saw her earlier, I had a little chat with her. She's 12 years old now, so um, she might be getting to the stage where she probably wants to make a decision whether to be a player herself or not. I mean... We have seen Rianne, of, um, of course, um, on Q School as well, um, along with uh, Neon Yi over the last couple of years. And uh, whilst they haven't managed to get onto the round the, the main match table, but uh, there are ten tables um, here at the Southwest Snooker Academy, and so there's a lot of action going on elsewhere. But those tables will will filter out as they go. Well, she didn't intend to cannon that red, but. Oh, it's not worked out too badly. That cue was absolutely tight on that side cushion here. Oh, that's a super pop. One. Fearless. Yeah, that was a high tower shot. She she knew she would be. Oh, that's a pity. She just needed to pop the black there. Position would, would have been automatic. And if this black pops into the left corner, we'll soon find out the way she plays this. Oh, it doesn't go. Played for the blue, but slightly overran. She's a, a very well aware of, of Rianne's break building capabilities. Is, I guess that might be a way of getting into the match. I don't think that would be a good idea myself, because for men players, her tactical ability will probably be greater than Emma's, I would imagine, with Emma as well being so young. I think Emma just needs to play her own style of, of, of snooker, the way that she's competitive enough to, to maybe win. Unless she was to hit it much, much too thin. Oh, she did. She caught that much too thin, unfortunately. But the cue ball has run away into bulk. But there is a thin cut on into the right corner here for Rianne. Turned it down in favour of the safety shot. And this cue ball's travelling nicely in behind the brown. That could be very useful. Cue ball two and a half feet off the bulk cushion. Oh, she's got the line wrong here and unfortunately that cannon on the green has given Rihanna a great opportunity here. A change tack this time. Yeah, unfortunately not much, uh, obviously she did get past the green, she got to this end of the table but not much. Cushion and side cushion, come to the right hand side of this green, like this. Well as seen there you can easily get a good favourable outcome and that's what's Rianne to have the balls in open play because you'd think that she'd be the bigger break builder the other difficult reds in the course of this safety shot <coughs> and that's not the worst outcome in the world for, for Emma knock it on to the same pocket but obviously not so she's played a safety shot again here, but where's this red going? Yeah, that's... Hmm. Can you... Ooh, nearly fluke one. Of course, it much too thinly, unfortunately, and that could be a catastrophic error now because he's addition on the coloured ball here. Yeah, she didn't fancy the black. I don't blame her. But in trying to get up for pot. Oh, good pot. Very good pot. And now a great chance to go on and win this first frame. 14 points. We saw um, a few weeks ago, Dominic, we had the, the World Disability Billiards and Snooker Champion of Champions here. And uh, we, we see a lot of this frame often take, take the opening frame. 
it's got a bit more work to do now in taking the yellow she'd need red no. colour possibly oh, she's taken the red on as a shot to nothing hoping to hide it behind the green and the blue which is exactly what she's done it's amazing how many it's times it's incredible <laughs> yeah it happens so many times it's just enough room for the cubal to go around the back of the red and that's what's happened and I think this is going to be a free play would she pop the red if she can just about see it full ball which she could it probably was a free ball she probably couldn't hit left hand right hand edge of that red but so just this pink required and that's put her 28 points ahead but unfortunately Yeah, it's been a bit of a, a, a cagey opener, the balls did go scrappier. Playing events in an academy like this, the chances are you're playing on all kinds of different tables and different cloths, so it, it sort of knocks about your rhythm a little bit. Not every table plays at the same speed or is as reactive as each. key when you're trying to get a snooker is to always try and keep the objects in case the yellow uh, that was the problem there Emma didn't quite get the yellow safe enough and Rianne spotted a good one but unfortunately she snookered herself on the green stretching as much as she can to just play the one cushion escape and that will do very nicely doesn't really matter that the greens be would you be thinking about perhaps um Popping the green and brown, like oh, I'm just wondering whether Emma's going to think about perhaps getting a five-point penalty to make the tie or something you'd you'd might advocate, or I would here, yeah, because obviously getting one snooker is easier than two, and the black's in a great position to try and get the cue ball behind. But I'd have liked to screw back there and left myself a centre pocket because from there you could have skimmed off the blue sort of quarter ball and got that cue ball in behind the black. Oh, that's going to make things difficult. An intentional fluke on the. So just a safety shot, containing safety shot, but I'm pretty sure Rihanna will make sure she leaves this pink as far away from the black as possible. Oh, goodness me, that cube. Can Emma dig this pink out? She can, so it keeps the frame alive, but looks as if the pink's going to be tracking over the same pocket again. And uh, Rianne completes an